This is our vlog, Tokyo, Japan, Part Three. This is the story of McKenna Travels. Come join us as we show you how we do it. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell to watch more of our content. Thank you. Over the past couple of days, we have seen the historical, like the Tokyo Tower, the fashion, like the action filled streets of Harajuku, the beauty, like the peaceful Imperial Palace Gardens, and the chaotic filled crossway of Shibuya. We have even touched some of the cultural side by eating some of the different foods served, but that is not enough. There is a few places we have not seen, and today is the day to explore these unique and exciting areas. If you haven't seen the last couple of videos of our recent adventures through Tokyo, please click the link above. Sensuji Temple, also known as Asakusa Kanon, is an ancient Buddhist temple located in Asakusa, Tokyo. It is Tokyo's oldest temple and one of the most significant. It is the most widely visited religious site in the world with over 30 million visitors annually. Next to the temple is a five story pagoda, the Asakusa Shinto Shrine, as well as the shops with traditional goods in the Nakamisa Dori. The temple is dedicated to the Bodhisattva Kanon. According to legend, a statue of Kanon was found in the Sumida River in 1628 by two fishermen brothers, Hinokuma Hamanari and Hinokuma Takanari. The chief of their village recognized the statue and enshrined it by remodeling his own house into a small temple in Asakusa so that the villagers could worship Kanon. During World War II, the temple was bombed and destroyed during the air raid on Tokyo. It was rebuilt later and is a symbol of rebirth and peace to the Japanese people. At the entrance to the temple stands the giant Kamina Rimon, or Thunder Gate. The structure features a giant paper lantern dramatically painted in vivid red and black tones to picture thunderclouds and lightning. Beyond the Kamina Rimon is Nakamisa Dori, with a wide variety of shops to choose from. From sugar-coated strawberries, kimonos, and traditional Buddhist scrolls, to more of a modern take, keychains, t-shirts, or mobile phone straps. Whatever you can think of. So we're on Kanandori Street, where the marketplace, and it is the oldest marketplace, or one of the oldest marketplaces stated in Japan. So there's like a lot of little streets interconnecting, kind of like alleyways. I'm stuck in the middle, I can't move. Get over there. Hey, once you get stuck, you can't move. Okay, now what are you getting? Sugar-glazed strawberries, but it's actually sweet, not sour. Like usually strawberries are. Following the Nakamisa Dori is the Hosomon, or the Treasure House Gate is the inner of the two large entrance gates that ultimately leads to the temple itself. The two-story building houses many of Sensuji's treasures. <laughs> Whilst walking through and around the Sensuji temple, you may notice many people wearing kimonos. Even though there are many reasons to wear the kimono, many people wear them because they enjoy and want to. Now it's time to head to the sky tree. Tokyo Sky Tree is a broadcasting and observation tower in Sumida, Tokyo. It became the tallest structure in Japan in 2010 and reached its full height of 634 meters in March 2011, making it the tallest tower in the world. We decided to check out the shopping center next to the Sky Tree. Japanese carry these around, everybody, because there's not usually napkins in the bathroom, so you carry one around. So you can dry your hands. There are many themed shops and restaurants in the shopping center and nearby, such as Kirby, Harry Potter, Pokemon, Miffy, and Peanut. If you haven't seen the video where we check out the Pokemon and Snoopy Cafe, then wait until the end to check it out. Okay, so we found a Snoopy store. I didn't even know that was 
impossible that it's in the Sky Tree Tower in Tokyo. And they have these little capsules and they show you all six. So you can buy all six if you want to. But the whole point of this is you don't know which one you're going to get. So I can get number one, number two, number three, number four, five, or six. So we're going to open them up and see what we got. And I got happiness with Snoopy and we could have got Terrarium on vacation. So her Snoopy's on vacation. We are hungry, so we went to the Sky Tree, Tokyo Sky Tree, and we just walked into a restaurant with beef pictures and that stuff, and we found out it was beef tongue. So I am safe with it because I had it the first day without knowing, and it tasted actually pretty good, so I'll give it a Before we left, we decided to check out some of the gachapon stores there. What are you doing? What are you doing? Nothing! <laughs> so we're, we're having fun gambling. Poppy's upset because we've literally got the same stupid three, <laughs> hold on, bobblehead hamsters. Oh, this is kind of different. We have stickers and we have a shrimp cat. <laughs> okay, we don't know. We don't know what's going on here. Is this just a waste of money? No, it's not. It's really not. It's an investment? It's an investment. Especially these little cute guys. Look at them. Can you put them away? Eating their little tiny seeds. The animals are fat. They have each different levels of a slug. <laughs> Look at that. Hey, Christy. Check this one out. Are you ashamed of yourselves? No. <laughs> if I had more money, I would do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has seen videos with Japanese people being pushed in the subways, but we wanted to experience it without being in the uncomfortable environment. How busy is it, McKenna? Busy, but ours luckily is not as busy as that one. We're on an empty train. Are we supposed to get off? I, I, I really don't know if we're supposed to get off. Like, look, nobody. Nobody! Are we supposed to, like, and it, yeah, and it is midday, so it, is it just to ourselves? Well, this train did, like, take 15 minutes to get here, so I'm basically getting that we're going to be sitting here for 15 minutes waiting. And now we are going to head to Omoede Yokocho. Omoede Yokocho is a maze of narrow alleyways filled with tiny stalls that fill the alleyways with sweet smelling smoke. Each of the stalls hang brightly lit red lanterns with decoration of sakura blossoms hanging overhead. The buildings around you as you walk through look old and beaten up. The name Omoede Yokocho roughly translates to memory lane, or in other word, a place that feels nostalgic to you. The area started as a huge black market close to Shinjuku Station in the days right after World War II. In those days, it was dangerous to visit the area, but hardly anyone had a choice, for here was the food and supplies. Current Omoede Yokocho food stalls still trace their tradition back to the wild spirit of the old black market, though they are all properly licensed restaurants now. We got a horse and whale back there. You want to try some horse or whale? In each stall there's a great variety of food in the grilled version and the raw. I'm sad we already ate. I know. <laughs> we can come back here. What is this? <laughs> yep. We ate this before we knew what it was. Mm. <laughs> So let me explain. We are extremely open-minded and respectful of other cultures, but we had done no research on the food choices in this area, and we were not prepared for what our experience was about to be. We were very lucky that the chef knew somebody that spoke English to be able to help us out. Tell us, how do we order? You just have to say the um, things that you want. So, are those the skewers that are here, right? Yeah, that's the ones. Okay. Perfect. Everything's from Japan, so it should be good. <laughs> it's very good, yeah. Okay, I'm not done it without him. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem.
So we're so confused on how this works. So we're lucky that the uh, cook was able to get one of his friends to help him out. Help us out. Yep, this is where the adventure started for us. Whilst sitting in the stalls, you must order a drink with your food, and not the drink alone. Otherwise, you'll be sent on your way. You could order grilled chicken, pig tongue, pig fat, chicken skin, shiitake mushrooms, intestines, mostly any part of the animal you can think of. Even the areas that may seem unappetizing to your palate. Oh yeah, all those parts are offered raw as well. Also, some interesting options such as raw whale, pufferfish, or horse may be displayed on the menu. <laughs> Unfortunately, we still had more questions, so I had to go back there and ask him for more help. I've been going to the cinema. Hang on. Oh, hey, you can order a beef skewers, pretty much. So we'll have them on a charcoal fire, which smells and maximum you can fit about maybe eight, ten, twelve people. Some of them are even smaller and you fit about six people in them. And you can order tongue, heart, head, liver, throat, wound, vagina, ovaries, stomach, intestines, spleen, or the fat at the head um, of the pork. So pork and then they're put on the barbecue. So Smells amazing. And, so it's, and it's very tight. The bar is here. The person cooking is right in front of us. And there's the hallway is super, super tight. But it smells delicious. There is smoking inside here. I find very um, interesting because smoking is quite controlled around Japan. There's only very small limited areas where you can smoke. But when we walked in, they gave us a little piece of paper that tells us the rules and they can apparently smoke in this little this little restaurant which is very unique now what's really cool is there's a bunch of sashimi in here you can get rolling part of the um, pig stomach sauce with horse meat which unfortunately we're not going to be able to try tonight because it's sold out so it must be that good um, whale meat and tuna and salmon so Mm -hmm. well, you're, you're eating when the baby's getting pregnant. I'm eating moom. It's actually really good. It's delicious, actually. This is whale. Whale sushi. You have this one available? Okay. Horse meat. Raw horse meat. It tasted like carpaccio, basically. Put it this way, if I didn't know what it was from ordering it, I, would be know, I wouldn't know what I mean. <laughs> it would taste like regular, like, carpaccio. So my overall experience about these little restaurants is it's very intimate. You kind of want to know what you, how it works. We are very lucky that the cook brought somebody in to be able to translate and how to do it, but very good. Very good. Thumbs up. And definitely try stuff out of your comfort zone. And yep, as you can see, there's a giant cat on the screen. It displays multiple videos of the cat in different situations, talking to the crowd of people below. Thank you for watching our channel, and please subscribe, leave a comment below, and ring the bell for our next video notification. We'll see you next weekend, guys.